This screencast pertains to the material in Module 4, Lesson 21, uh, where we find equivalent fractions, multiplying by fractions that are equivalent to 1, and also convert those fractions to decimal numbers. This is based upon the practice set, but should give you sufficient guidance to get you through your homework. Okay, let's begin. We have one example here. We have 1 fourth times 1, and that's the same as 1 fourth. We rename 1 as 3 thirds, and we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the 3. So 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, and our equivalent fraction is four, or 3 twelfths. Now they want us to do an example on our own. So we're going to zoom in here a little bit, and we'll go through the process here. We have 3 fourths by 1. We know that's still 3 fourths. And we have to multiply 3 fourths by something that's equivalent to 1, where the numerator and the denominator are the same, and get 21 twenty eighths. Well, what do I have to multiply 4 by to get 28? Likewise, I could ask, what do I have to multiply 3 by to get 21? The answer in both cases is 7. So we'll now write 7 sevenths which is equivalent to 1, and we get 21 28 Let's do another example. Oops, wrong tool. Undo that. Moving this over. And we get 7 fourths times 1. And we have 7 fourths times a fraction that's equivalent to 1 with the same numerator and denominator. And we want to get 35 twentieths. Well, again, if I multiply 4 by 5, I get 20. And 7 multiplied by 5 gets 35. So our fraction equivalent to 1 is 5 fifths. So how do we get these equivalent fractions? Well, we have to multiply the fraction by another fraction that's equivalent to 1 and we end up with an equivalent fraction. So as long as the numerator and the denominator are the same, and we multiply that times a fraction, we'll get an equivalent fraction. Let's do some examples where we go through this process and then find the decimal equivalent. Okay, we're going to go through several examples here where we have to convert a fraction to a decimal. First, we're going to make it a fraction with a denominator of either 10, 100, or a thousand, and from there it's easy. And again, we have to multiply our fractions by uh, one renamed as a fraction that gives us the desired denominator. Let me uh, give you an example here, and uh, we'll try to make that clearer to you. We'll zoom in a little bit. We have one fifth times something equals uh, either a tenth, hundredth, or a thousand. Well, I know I can multiply by two to get one-tenth. So we'll have two halves, two over two. We multiply both the numerator and the denominator by ten, and I get two-tenths. Now that becomes a decimal, so easy enough to rename that, as point two or two-tenths. Moving right along. Uh, Again, we have the denominator of the fifths, so we know that, once again, we need to find a fraction that has a ten as a denominator. We know we can do that if we multiply it by two halves, which is equivalent to one. And four times two is eight, making eight over ten, or eight-tenths, and we can rename that as point eight, or eight-tenths. Continuing. A uh, little uh, less scaffolding here, a little less help. We know that we have to multiply this by some fraction that will give us something with a ten, a hundred, or a thousand in the denominator. Well, I can't uh, get a ten easily here, but what can I multiply twenty by to get one hundred? Well, we should know that there are five twenties in one hundred, so we'll multiply it by five fifths. 1 times 5 is 5, and 20 times 5 is 100. 
and that becomes the decimal point zero two or two hundredths once again. Navigating across, we see we have 20 as our denominator once again. So we know we're going to multiply that by 5 fifths. And we have 27 times 5. Okay, that would be 135. And 20 times 5 is 100. Now in this case, we have a uh, numerator that's greater than the denominator. So we know that that's going to give us... Uh, an equivalent that's greater than 1. We could first change this to a mixed number or not. Just want to run this through and that would be 1.35 or 1 and 35 hundredths. Okay, 7 fourths. Can I multiply 4 by something, a whole number to get a 10? The answer is no. But if I think quarters, right, I know that there's four quarters in one dollar. So I know that if I multiply four times 25, I get 100. So we give the equivalent fraction, the fraction equivalent to one as 25, 20 fifths. And we will get, well, we know seven quarters is a dollar 75. And four times 25, four quarters is one dollar. Again, we could name this as a mixed number and of course it's easy enough either way to get it to a decimal 1.75 or 1 and 75 hundredths. Okay now we have 8 fifths and we've seen the denominator of 5 before. We can multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. So we will make 2 halves and 8 times 2 is 16, 5 times 2 is 10, and we could change that again to a mixed number, 1 and 6 tenths, and of course working it to a fraction, 1 and 6 tenths. 24 twenty fifths, well we can multiply 25 times 4 to get 100. So the equivalent to 1 is 4 fourths, and we'll multiply 24 times 4, and we get 96. 25 times 4, we get 100, and we get 96 hundredths. Final example here, 93 fiftieths. Oh, I know I can multiply 50 times 2. So 2 halves, and that gives us, oh, we multiply that, 93 times 2 would be 186. 50 times 2 is 100. That's 1 and 86 hundredths. Or, of course, as a decimal, this 1 and 86 hundredths, 1.86. Let's read number 3. Jack said that if you take a number and multiply it by a fraction, the product will always be smaller than what you started with. Is he correct? Why or why not? Explain your answer and give at least two examples to support your thinking. Well, Jack is uh, right some of the times. It depends on the fraction, though. If the fraction is less than 1, it's less than 1, okay, then we'll end up with a smaller number if the fraction equals 1, we have an equivalent fracture. It's fraction, rather. It's not smaller, it's not larger, it's identical uh, in value. If the fraction is greater than 1, then we end up with a product that's greater than our original factor. So I want to give some examples? Sure, we can give a number of examples. So if I take a number and uh, I could use a fractional number or any number I like. Uh, I'll, I'll use a fraction. Suppose I have one half times two halves. That equals two fourths. And one half equals two fourths. So we don't end up with a smaller number. I could also take one uh, third, for example, times four thirds. Now, four thirds is greater than one. And I end up with a number, uh, four ninths, 
and we know that 4 ninths is greater than 1 third. Those are two examples. There's infinite examples. But again, if we follow this basic rule outlined right here, if the fraction we're multiplying, the fraction factor is less than 1, we end up with a smaller uh, product. If it's equal to 1, we end up with a product of the same value. If the fraction factor is greater than 1, we end up with a product of a greater uh, number than the original factor. All right, this is not too hard either. There is an infinite way to represent one on the number line. In a space below, write at least four expressions multiplying by one. Represent one differently in each expression. Okay. Simple examples, take a given fraction or not. You could use a whole number. So if I, I think the point of this is fractions. So, so if I have two-thirds times two halves, again, two halves is the equivalent to one. I get four-sixths. Uh, let's just take another three-fourths times ten-tenths equals 30 fortieths. We'll try one-fifth times any given number. Three-thirds is fine. Equals three-fifteenths. And we'll use uh, seven-eighths times five-fifths equals 35 fortieths. As you can see, there's any number of examples. The only thing we have to pay attention to is the fact that our second factor here, or one of our factors, is equivalent to 1. And of course, we know it's equivalent to 1 if the numerator and the denominator are the same. All right, last example. This uh, Maria multiplied 1 to rename 1 fourth as hundredths. She made factor pairs equal to 10. Then use her method to change 1 eighth to an equivalent decimal. Okay, this one's a little more complicated. 1 eighth equals. Well, let's uh, break this down. 1 eighth is equal to, uh, we could say 2 times 2 times 2. We'll take that and we factored out 8 to 2 times 2 times 2. And every one of these 2's needs a 5 to make a 10. So we're going to multiply it by 5 times 5 times 5. And since we want a fraction equivalent to 1, we have to have the same in the numerator and the denominator. Now, since it's a 1, I still have my 5 times 5 times 5. And now I have 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5. We know each one of these is equivalent to 10. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 5. I get 25. 25 times 5 is 125. And 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And I end up with 125 thousandths. Let's look at the bottom part here now. Paulo renamed it one eighth as a decimal two. He knows that the decimal equivalent or equal to one fourth, and he knows that one eighth is half as much as one fourth. Can you use his idea to show another way to find a decimal equal to one eighth? Well, if we know that one fourth equals 25 hundredths, and we know that 1 eighth is half of that, we can find 1 half of 25 hundredths. So we have a divisor, or dividend rather, of 25 hundredths put in our decimal. We're going to divide it by 2. 2 goes into 2 once. I subtract and I get a 0. I bring down my 5. How many times does 2 go into 5? It goes in twice. 2 times 2 is 4. I subtract, I get a 1. We're going to have to 
put another zero in the thousandths place and bring that down. We now have a 10, and 2 goes into 10 five times. 10 minus 10 is 0. And we found another way to find a fraction equivalent to 1 eighth based upon what we know about 1 fourth.